Before My Heart Gives Out by Kira 18 on AO3. Chapter 14. The Storm. Three days have passed since the night at the docks. Slowly, Izuku is starting to feel better. He's eating and sleeping more, his energy slowly but surely increasing with time. His new job at the convenience store, restocking and shelving the aisles. He's finally getting the amount of money he needs to keep going. For once, it feels like he's got all his cards in check. Granted, he didn't get to tell Shinso yet about his new job. The boy has been gone on his internship for two days. He went with a racerhead of all people. It made sense, though. Aizawa was a very proficient underground hero. Besides, Shinso's quirks worked best in controlled circumstances. Underground hero work would be the perfect field for him. Deciding that dropping in on the pair would be fun, Izuku opts to going to Hosu tonight too, although the main reason for his visit had nothing to do with that. He'd analyzed the hero killer's attack pattern through some of the news articles he found. Depending on whether his findings are accurate, Stain's next victim should be in Hosu City, either tonight or tomorrow. He won't let that man hurt anyone else. Shinso's internship was going great so far. He spent the best part of the last two days training with Aizawa. The man was a force to be reckoned with. His training was brutal, but efficient. It left Shinso feeling exhausted to the core, but satisfied nonetheless. Until finally, the man decided to let him tag along his patrol in Hosu City. His teacher wanted him to experience some real street-level fighting. However, what they didn't expect was to find Nomu suddenly appearing out of nowhere. Not one, but three. Aizawa immediately ordered him to stay on the sidelines, help evacuate civilians, and only fight if necessary. So, Shinso got to work. So, Shinso got to work. He directed panicked civilians toward safety shelters that were set up a couple of blocks away, made sure to administer basic first aid to those who were a little banged up. All the while, he kept an eye on his surroundings, not wanting to be caught off guard. Yet, despite his diligent following of Aizawa's orders, he couldn't help but stray a little when he heard something coming from a nearby alley. He should have informed Aizawa, should have told someone to go with him. However, at the time, all he could think of was the cry for help he heard. His mind immediately flashed back to Izuku. The teen told him once that he could never stand there while people needed help. Shinso wouldn't either. Izuku didn't know what to think when he got Shinso's text message. Suppressing his growing sense of dread, he follows the directions. What he didn't expect, however, was the boy's text to lead him right to the villain he'd been looking for all night. The location Shinso sent him pinpointed to a deserted alley in Haosu City. Arriving there, he made sure to scan the area before making himself known. His blood froze as he looked into the narrow clearing. The scene before him was too familiar for comfort. In fact, it was a perfect replica of that night. The night where he saved Ingenium. This time, instead of one person, he found three. Shinso was the closest to his position. The teen was slumped on the ground, face facing the concrete. Next to him was another teen. The boy's body emitted both cold and hot temperatures, each coming from different sides of his body. Todoroki, his mind concluded. Stain wasn't paying attention to either of them, though. The man was standing over a third person. A hero, most likely. Sword held up in his signature position, ready to get his task done. Stain, he shouts, knowing that the vigilante would want to deal with him first. His voice instantly attracts their collective attention. He can practically feel Shinso's gaze boring into him. Get away from them. Your fight is with me. The vigilante steps away from the fallen hero with a growl, walking almost casually towards Izuku. I told you, Shadow. The next time you'd get in my way, I'd kill you. I'd like to see you try, Izuku says before he could stop himself. Are you crazy? He hears Shinso shouting. Don't provoke him. Ah, yes. His friend was probably worried about him. Stain ignores the outburst completely, probably already familiar with Shinso's quirk, given that the teen was on the ground and the villain still conscious. 
You know, Shigaraki has a bounty over your head. The information doesn't really come as too much of a surprise to him. He'd been expecting some sort of retaliation from the villain. He's been getting in the League's way too many times. Scoffing slightly, he tries to mask the tension in his limbs. Willing his mind to calm down, he needs to stay focused on the task at hand. I respect you, Stain hiss, mercilessly. You would be wise to do the same. You'll have to earn it, he smirked, trying to convey confidence. The last thing he needs is for Stain to realize the amount of anxiety and worry he's feeling right now. The words are barely out of his mouth when two knives come flying at him, slashing through the air at an incredible speed. Refracting both his Esmeralda rods, he manages to deflect the offending objects just as they're about to make contact with his skin, deflecting both the blades, sending them skidding on the ground on either side of him. Two more come his way as he advances on the vigilante, his rods efficiently redirecting them too. Going on the offensive, he jumps into a roundhouse kick aimed at the men's head. Still, Stain is known for his strength and speed. The villain dodges the hit by falling into a low stance and sliding behind him. The moment Izuku turns to face him, he's met with a kick to the chin. The blow sends him flat on his back, hitting the ground with a thud. Izuku doesn't stay down, though. Instantly, he's back on his feet. He doesn't have the luxury of time. Stain has a sword in his grip now, blade rapidly coming at his unprotected side. He barely manages to block it with his batons in time, immediately pushing against the force and jumping back. He needs to create some distance regain his bearings. His heart was beating loudly in his chest by now, breath erratic, coming out in wild bursts. Stain doesn't give him the time to collect himself. In a flash, the man is on him, sword held in front of him, as he charges at full speed, the tip of the blade aiming for his heart. Jumping up, Izuku dodges the attack, flipping his body in a perfect stance in order to get a hit in, his foot immediately going down, hitting the Kiro killer on the back of the head. The blow makes him lose his footing. Stain stumbles a couple steps forwards, nearly falling in the process. He doesn't, though. Instead, the man growls in frustration, straightening back up. The aurora radiating from his silhouette seems to change. It sends chill down Izuku's spine. Stain's movements afterwards are different. The man isn't aiming to incapacitate anymore. He's aiming to kill. They clash once again, a blur of movements. Both of them are fast and stubborn. However, Stain knows Shadow's weakness. He knows what he has to do to make him let down his guard. Without warning, Stain throws one of his knives. The blade is aimed at Shinso this time. As if the world stops, Izuku drops his guard, his sole focus honed on the gliding metal soaring through the air. Turning his back on Stain, he throws his rod. The weapon hits the knife just in time to rear it off its course. That was his first mistake. He feels the hit coming, can sense the way the air shifts as the man behind him brings his sword up. His body moves to the side as fast as he can. It's not fast enough, though. Shadow! He hears both Todoroki and Shinso shout, despair and fear evident in their tone. The blade plunges right through Izuku's side. The pain that erupts from the wound is agonizing. He feels every fiber of his skin being ripped apart, his muscles being torn and shredded by the weapon. It would have been his heart. The scream tears itself out of his throat unwillingly, as Stain retracts his sword, pulling at the wound in the process. He can hear the shift of his bones with it. To Izuku's increasing confusion, Stain doesn't try to hit him again. Instead, the killer brings the sword up to his mouth and licks the blood off of it. It's only a moment later that he realizes what's happened, as his body slumps to the ground motionless, as he loses any sense of control over his body. He's left paralyzed, completely and utterly defenseless. His analytical mind immediately kicks in, noting the specifics of the man's quirk. He can't really ponder it, though, for the villain takes his vulnerable state as an opportunity to advance. His steps are slow and measured, a grin stretched at the muscles of his face. 
Izuku can feel the satisfaction radiating from him. You're a worthy opponent, he says seriously. It'll be an honor to claim your life. The weight of his failure crashes down on him. A suffocating feeling of utter defeat surges within him as he listens to the villain's movements. He braces himself for the hit. A million thoughts and regrets coming at the forefront of his mind. He chooses to focus instead on the all-too-familiar heartbeat near him. At least Shinzo was alive. At least he got to save him one last time. He waits. And waits. But the blow doesn't come. Instead, a sudden influx of heat roars to life in the space separating the hero killer and his fallen body. A wall of fire. Todoroki. Vaguely, he can also feel Shinzo's breath out in relief. Get away from him! Todoroki shouts, anger dripping from his every word. Izuku doesn't know why. Todoroki doesn't know Shadow. He'd never seen him. Why would he be so angry? He watches as Stain dodges out of the way, puts some distance between himself and the flames. Todoroki was moving. Did that mean that the paralysis was temporary? For all he knew, Shinzo was the first one on the scene, Todoroki probably coming when he received a similar message to Izuku's own. So a time limit wasn't likely. He's brought back from his musing by another wave of heat. His senses perceive the flames differently. The sheer warmth and hotness emitting from the blaze bathed his world in something not quite colored, but bright nonetheless, creating a catastrophe of vibrations in the very air. Izuku would have found it beautiful if not for the fight that's happening right in front of him. He doesn't know how long Todoroki lasts against Dane, but soon enough, he's not alone anymore. Shinzo moves to join him. The capture weapon that he requested with his hero costume, already in hand. They fight in union, bodies moving in synchronization. It speaks of the training they've had together. His all must be a good teacher, Izuku thinks to himself. They won't last long, though. Izuku knows it. They don't have the experience nor the level of skills to go head-on with the hero killer, even if the man was already worn out from his fight with Shadow. Frustration wells up inside him as he watches. He feels completely useless as he lays there while his friends fight in his stead. It's then when he feels it. His fingers twitch slightly, body ever so slowly, gaining back its mobility. Definitely not time-based, then. He gets up, as stealthy as he could, slowly making his way around the group, positioning his body right behind the vigilante, nodding minutely to the two heroes in training, who must have noticed him by now. He makes his move. Running at full speed, he boosts himself from the nearby wall and jumps at the man. Taking the startled villain in his hold, he flips them both to the ground, landing on top of him holding both his arms back in a chokehold. His sides ache at the movement, but he pushes on. The hero killer barely manages to struggle against his grip, too tired and battled to put up a fight. They really didn't pull their punches. He spares a glance at the two heroes in training. Thankfully, they catch on fast. Shinso wraps his capture weapon around the villain, and Todoroki sends a wave of ice effectively in casting the stained body within. A kick to the head does it, though. Stain's body slumps forward, finally unconscious. Izuku watches as his two companions relax slightly, the tension and adrenaline from the fight visibly sleeping from their bodies. It's their first real fight, Izuku realizes. Up until now, the only fights they've been in was in controlled environments at school and at the USJ. However, it's their first time facing a real villain. A warrior, skilled, and fearsome. Even Izuku himself feels a little out of it. Of course, he could also blame his blood loss for that. Still, he knows. Feels the way the fight shook him too. Senses the lasting effects it had on him. Are you guys okay? He asks, already moving to make his way to the hero still on the ground. Todoroki and Shinso shift behind him, not expecting his question. Are we okay? 
Shinso questions him, irritably. You're the one who fought him for real. You're the one who got hurt. Something interrupts Shinso's charade, and Izuku vaguely thinks that it might have been Todoroki's elbow. The teen is probably wary of him, not wanting his friend to get in trouble. Shouting at a wanted criminal like that, what he means to say is, um, thank you for saving us. The fire and ice user says blankly. The sincerity in his voice makes Izuku pause. Y yeah, thanks, Shadow. Shinso mumbles a moment later, probably feeling slightly guilty for getting so worked up. Izuku elects to ignoring them, focusing instead on helping the hero, which he knows now as native, up. He hisses slightly as he accidentally pulls at his injuries, the sound immediately catching the two students' attention. We'll take it from here, Shadow. Todoroki speaks up. We need to take you to the hospital. The teen, already moving to take Native's weight off of him. Izuku hands the hero over, but shakes his head on the second part. No hospital. I'll be fine. He says firmly, not leaving any room for argument. Now I'll be leaving before the heroes get here. Todoroki seems to hesitate for a moment, before finally concealing stepping aside to let Izuku pass by. Shinso doesn't move, though, his gaze fixed on the vigilante in a hard glare. You need help. His voice sounded angry, but Izuku can hear the worry in his tone, can feel the irregular of his heartbeat, the sweat forming on his brow. A hand drops to Shinso's shoulder before Izuku has a chance to say anything. Todoroki meets his gaze, knowingly. Finally, Shinso moves. He's reluctant to do so, but seems to understand that Izuku has no other choice. Going to a hospital means getting caught. Getting caught means getting arrested. Nodding one last time to the two, he climbs onto a nearby dumpster and hauls his way up into a nearby ledge, effectively climbing up the building's wall and onto the roof. He feels two pairs of eyes trained on him the whole time. The wind rushes in his ears as he runs, the pain in his side flaring with every movement he makes. He knew he had to push through, though. Knew he had to make it to the warehouse. Push through the haze. Push through the overwhelming need to fall asleep. Let go. He runs and runs, but the pain is too intense. It overwhelms every part of his body, makes him lose his focus. He's so distracted that he doesn't notice the figure charging at him from the side. The hit takes him by surprise, the force sending him toppling over the edge of the structure. The next thing he knows, he's falling. The world rushes by in a blur, his perception of time becoming disoriented, his focus honing in on the wind that rushes past him. He knows the pain is coming, he expects it to, yet he's not ready for it, can't be. Agony overwhelms his entire body on impact. A soundless scream tears itself from his throat as his back hits the asphalt. He feels the shifting of his bones, his rib cracking under the sheer force of the impact, the sound roaring in his ears, remnants of an old cracking ship. The pain in his side thunders to life as it makes contact with the hard concrete excruciating agony envelops his entire being for what feels like hours, but it couldn't have been more than a couple of seconds. Vaguely, he can feel drops of rain falling onto his figure, the stream getting stronger by the second. He tries to breathe out, but no air comes out of his lungs, a whimper slipping through his bloodied lips as he rolls himself onto his stomach. His body disagrees with the action, but he fights through the aching in his limbs. Whoever pushed him is still here. He feels them. Hears their footsteps echo through the alley. He fell in. It's a man. Every step, gradually a louder noise. A pounding sound against a metal staircase. The clinking echoes and vibrations go through the very ground he lays on. The dread overwhelms him. His heart practically beating right out of his chest. He weasels out a pained breath as he lifts his torso off the ground, arms shaking with the effort. A strong smell of copper surrounds him. He doesn't have the time to stall, though. 
He moves out of the way, just in time for a kick to miss his face by mere inches. Groggly, he stumbles back to his feet, adrenaline pushing his body to react, instincts taking over in order to survive. The rain falls in thick lines, a curtain forming between him and his attacker. It helps ground Izuku to reality, making him aware of the man's every move. What do you want? He grumbles out, voice wavering with the effort to make the words out. The man growls lowly, advancing in on him, ignoring his question in favor of attacking him once again. He barely dodges the punch that comes his way, only to be hit by a kick to the side a moment later. The pain sends him stumbling a few steps backwards, hands clutching tightly at his wound, body hunched over. He tries to struggle, but the man is stronger. Moreover, Izuku is still tired and injured from his fight from stain. Lifting him up, the guy slams him back to the ground, knocking his breath away and sending him into a series of wet coughs. The villain is on him in a second, hand encircling his throat, choking him with more force than he could handle. The world goes in and out, a focus all around him, and he's starting to lose any hope of making it out of this alive. Tears gathering in the corner of his eyes as he struggles for breath. It's ironic, really, that despite his life having a metaphorically expiry date, he still doesn't get to live long enough to reach it. Everything he's been readying himself for evaporates in an instant. Numbly, the realization hits him at full force. He's not ready to die. He thinks back to everything he pushed through and overcome until now. Rue's words echo in his mind. You may feel like you're alone right now, like the world is against you, but a little hope, some kind of determination to be better, will go a long way. One last burst of energy goes through him, gathering the last bits of his strengths. He rams his head into the villains, effectively pushing the man off. He doesn't let himself a moment to regain his breath, already going in for a hit trying his hardest to stay conscious, to fight against the growing void that's trying to overtake him. The villain doesn't go down easily. His hands seem to morph into sharp spikes, and he attacks him once more. The swipes strike at him, slashing at the rain every time Izuku dodges. Every slash makes the image in Izuku's mind clearer. Slowly, but effectively, he's able to pinpoint the exact place the spikes are going to hit next. Taking his opportunity, and finding an opening, he takes hold of the villain's extended arm and pulls with all his might. A guttural sound erupts from his throat with the effort. Finally, he's able to flip the villain over his shoulder, effectively knocking him out. The adrenaline fades just as fast as it appeared, and his mind shuts down. The last thing he feels is the rain falling on his slumped body, the smell of copper getting even stronger around him. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I told you. I told you it was too quiet. It was too peaceful. It was too good. And then we were going through the chapter and I'm like, okay. Well, he got stabbed. It can't get worse. He got worse. So I'm taking a guess that that villain that just attacked him is attacking him because of the bounty that Shigaraki has over his head. Which, you know what, no, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm gonna talk about that at the end. Save my tears, save my tears. I have notes, Echo. Echo, you have notes. You have to say the notes. Okay, so let's talk about Izuku's weakness, right? Izuku's weakness. His, his overall weakness is the fact that, of course, he is a hero at heart. So he's going to put the civilians' lives ahead of his own. But I find it extremely interesting that the two times we have seen him gravely injured, right? To the point where he has to take weeks to recover, and he's like, brink death. Both are a result of him saving Shinso's life. Like, putting his life in front to save Shinso's life. Like, uh, for, for example, obviously, the USJ. He, he literally jumped to take the hit for Shinso, and I'm guessing Sue. Um, for... Um, this time, obviously, he goes ahead and saves Shinso's life at the risk of getting hurt himself, right? Possibly, like, even if even if he was just a, 
a millisecond late, Izuku would have died in that moment, right? In both time, he was in a near-death experience and was gravely injured because he put Shinzo's life ahead of him. I say that's gay. I say that's gay. Um, I want to say, though, as I was as, as I was sitting here and, and reading this, right? And, and specifically, we're like, you know, um, he was about to get killed by what's it called? Stain? Like, in my heart, I'm like, okay, I know how he dies. So it can't be this, right? It literally cannot be this. I know, I know what happens. I know what leads up to his death, right? So it, it can't be this, right? But you probably, you guys are probably thinking, oh, it's, it's the middle of the story. Izuku can't die in the middle of the story. I don't think you understand. This is fan fiction. The author does not give a shit. I know as hell if I was the one writing this and I was to kill Izuku off, I would make sure to kill him off in the middle of the story, when you least fucking expect it, in the most brutal way. And I don't mean brutal death, no, it could be a nice peaceful death, but brutal in the sense of he never gets to accomplish shit he wanted to, right? Or moments before he was about to be saved, like he's bleeding out, and if, 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 it, if he would have lasted just a couple seconds sooner, he would have been saved, kind of, you know, moments, kind of things, because that is what I find absolutely heart-wrenching, right? And I would, I would, I would wrench your heart. Y'all are lucky I'm not writing major character death in Fluffy Mind. Well, no, 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 I, no, I can't do that to him. Well, I mean, I could, no, I'm not, I'm not doing that to him. As I was saying, <laughs> as I was saying, that'd be cruel, that'd be cruel, I'd, that'd be mean, I would be, that'd be too mean, I can't be that mean. You know, well, you know, you know, you know. Uh, anyways, as I was saying, right? So do not get pulled in a sense of security just because the story isn't over, it's halfway done. Never, and I repeat, never be sensed into a false security because that is when they catch you. That is when they freaking catch you, right? Okay, so I want to talk about Stain. In Stain is not a vigilante. I've seen some people call him a vigilante, not necessarily here, but like, I don't classify him as a vigilante. I classify him as an anti-hero because he's doing heroic things, right? Questionable heroic things. Um, but the means are not necessarily heroic. His morals and his ways of doing things, or not his ways of doing things, but his reasons of doing things and um, the effects is... Um, considered quote-unquote um, just and uh, heroic in a sense but his ways of doing things and his ways about going through that change is not so heroic it is killing right it is basically a hero doing what a hero must do even if it means murder even if it means torture even if it means breaking morals anti-hero Right? And not all anti-heroes are completely good, just like how not all anti-heroes are completely uh, bad. I feel like uh, Stain falls in under more towards the bad category, mainly because he has a... Uh, I don't think he has a good way of scaling what a good hero is or not. And in the sense of what a good hero is or not, that, that itself is already such a complex thing that him trying to juggle that with the complex... Uh, yeah, it's just... It wasn't, it wasn't meant to be, you know, kind of thing. So, okay, on to the elephant of the room. Izuku is passed out. Last time Izuku was passed out, Shinzo was the one to find him. I really, really, really want Izawa to find him because I don't want Izuku to be in that damn fucking warehouse one second longer. And I really, really fucking want Izuku to get fucking help. You know, I'm tearing up again because I'm thinking about the fact that he is literally unconscious, probably has some sort of concussion, Probably has internal bleeding, probably a collapsed lung since he got uh, stabbed close to his chest area. So he probably has a collapsed lung. He probably has internal bleeding. There's probably fluid in his lungs. He probably has broken ribs. If if the ribs haven't punctured both of his lungs, at least one of his lungs is punctured. And if his ribs broke, then the other lung is probably also punctured. And if not, the one lung that is already punctured is punctured twice. Great, hooray, amazing. He's bleeding out, he doesn't have medical help, and he's probably going to, like, I... 
am so, so scared for him. Like, I know he's not gonna die right now. Well, he could. You know what? He could. For all I know, he could. And... All right, we're gonna, we're gonna end this right now because I need to cry afterwards and, and I need a break. But as always, my rain jobs, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds. Have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.